Hello, this is a tutorial showing you how to make stuff move on the screen with OpenGL. Uh, this is my first time doing live commentary, so beware, me, beware with me. Um, however, how you do this is that you render one frame, where the sprite is, let's say, on the coordinate 1616, and then in the next frame you render the same sprite at a different position. This will make the sprite look like it's moving over the screen. So uh, here's the step in the first frame. You translate to the position where you want to render your texture, and then you simply render your texture. And uh, as you can see here, it's 1616. And uh, in the next frame, we do the same things, but this time we render it at 1717. And the important stuff is right here. What you want to do is, you want to store these positions somewhere in your code so that you can remember them from frame to frame. And in between the two frames, you simply increase the position variables, like for instance here, I move one pixel to the right and one pixel down. So let's look at some code here. Uh, as you can see, I already have everything set up with my own engine, of course. And uh, I'm using SDL to create a window and to handle input. I'm using op OpenGL to render stuff, but uh, you won't be, s you won't see anything of that really because I encapsulated everything in a renderer like this class over here. However, you could either store your position in something like this, a simple struct with an X and Y component, which describes the position of the sprite. So uh, let's start. We'll start by doing a new object, new class. And we call it sprite. Just to make it simple for us. So right. And now let's make our class. And uh, over here we want to we want a sprite to start with drone somewhere the starting position on the sprite. So let's take in two two uh, parameters two parameters for this. So we start to read the x position float x and next uh, thing we want is the y position float y and this is pretty all this is pretty much all we need to begin with so this is the constructor now let's make the constructor in our C++ file. Just include the thing. Yes, like this. Um, so let's make our constructor for the sprite. Float x and float y. Now, uh, as I said before, we have to store this somewhere. And we'll store it right in the, into the class. So make. So let's make two new mem member variables. Variables, so by x and y. So in the constructor, all we do is we set x to x and y to y. So what will we need next? Yes, we will need a 
texture for sprites of course so let's uh, I do this in my own way but you can do it any way you like you can store your textures however you like of course but I do it in my engine I do it like this resource the type of the resource and then I just sign the name and uh, let's load it I've already made a texture for sprite here and this will use this so it's in files images sprite dot pj so this should uh, allow us to set the starting position for our sprite and uh, of course load the texture for the sprite and uh, the next thing we want to do is a draw function which we will call in the main game loop right here right between where we clean the back buffer and uh, then yeah we clean the back buffer we draw to it and then we swap the back and front buffers so let's create a draw function void draw and uh, yes we will make it constant So all this function do, does is simply draw the sprite to the screen, or the texture to the screen. So uh, let's see, yes I have the renderer. Um, I use a renderer class to do this, but um, I'll show you the corresponding calls to OpenGL besides that. So let's do this, renderer. Matrix just to reset the trans translation matrix, I believe it's called, and this translates to the GL call of load identity. It's it's as simple as that. I just encapsulate everything in a single class, and uh, now we want to render do translation. And uh, what we do here is that we translate to the position where we want to draw the sprite or texture. And uh, this is simply the GL call translate f, and it would look something like this if you did it just like that. And the last call we'll do is uh, render texture. And uh, if you're watching this tutorial, I assume that you know how to render a texture to the screen. So this is where you do the GL quads and uh, yeah, you simply draw the texture to the screen. So let's try this and see how it looks. I'll just uh, make or code a bit more good looking. Our member variables. We'll have to change these two. And this is a render texture. So let's try to draw our new sprite or texture to the screen so uh, first of all we of course have to make a new instance of the class and um, we will include the header file first of course the next thing we do is uh, create an instance of it let's just call it sprite for the simplicity and uh, just as in this image, we'll start uh, start to draw it. I 
at 16, 16. So let's do that, 16, 16. And uh, this will of take, of course, make these two to 16, 16. And now we'll call the render function for the sprite. Sprite, a draw function, of course. And uh, when we start this, we should see something like this. The sprite drawn at the top left corner of the screen. So let's see how it works out. Yes, just like we wanted, but um, it's not moving, right? So what we want to do next is to give it an update function. So let's start by doing it. Uh, let's make it uh, void updates. And this is not the constant function because we'll be changing some values, of course. And uh, I know that my game runs at uh, 30 FPS, so uh, yeah, frames per second, of course. So uh, if I want, we want to make the sprite move down to the left, down to the right, five pixels a second. So if we look at our calculator here, we take five divided by 30 seconds. So we get this number, and this is what will update the sprite's position with. So let's do this. Uh, Nx plus equals 0 0.16. And we'll do the same thing for the y. So this should make when we call the update function, it should update these two variables, which we then translate to in the draw function. So let's, in our game loop, call our new update function. Sprite. Update. So what we should see now is that our sprite, which starts here, will be moving at uh, 5 pixels every frame to the right and down so it will move like this over the screen so we'll take a look at it and hope that it works yes as you can see it's moving and uh, like uh, we could make this even better actually what if we had something like n speed, a speed variable, and we add this here, float speed. So, speed. Now, uh, in our update function, uh, let's make it more advanced, a little bit more complicated. We will take in the delta, the milliseconds elapsed from the last frame uh, into the next one, of course. So we will add delta. So this is just uh, the time it takes to do go from here to here. And we pass that to the update function in milliseconds. And uh, now that we have our speed, we can do this speed times a thousand, no, delta divided by a thousand. And it have to be float because if we divide an integer with an integer, we'll end up with an another integer. And uh, uh, delta will be very, very, very low. So, tau, yeah. We we simply need to have this as a float. So let's make it so speed times delta divided by thousand. Uh, let me just think now so that I don't. Yeah, I 
possibly it's the other way around actually. It's tau fm divided by delta. Like that. So now in our, of course we have to pass the uh, del new delta time to the update function and this is of course 1000 divided by the fps that I assign right here. So let's see, in our um, constructor we want to pass the speed which it will move at every second. So let's say 10, 10 pixels a second to the both to the right and down. Let's see how it looks. Oh, that was really, really fast. But I think, yeah, okay. It uh, is actually this way around. I was, I was right in the first place. Yeah, and uh, so the basic things that you really need is you have to store the x and y position for your sprites and uh, you'll have an update function which updates the these two variables the position of the sprite and uh, then in the draw function you simply translate to the, the these two variables, the x and y positions and then you render your texture right there and this will make it look like it's moving let's make it move a bit faster actually like 10 pixels a second yeah and uh, if you would like to make it move according to key presses you would want to do something like this, so a handle function. And uh, in this function, I, I, I won't show this in this video, but you would uh, want to make it something like uh, this. You would like to have uh, an x velocity variable, and you would want to have an y velocity variable and uh, you will add this here of course and you would uh, nah, you, you should just store speed and uh, when you have these two what you do in the handle function is uh, simply something like this if um, up key pressed then uh, m i velocity equals plus equals and speed and then the key release and y velocity minus m speed yeah you, you would want to do something like this and uh, when you update your x position you would use the m uh, x velocity a variable and over here you want to use your m y velocity variable so i hope this cleared things up for you and i hope you enjoyed watching too uh, bye